Good luck, Caleb. What, Jesse? You too. <laughs> Just kidding. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Listen around. Hi, and I'm Jason Whitman, and I will be your Prime Minister. Thank you for judging. Mm -hmm. Thank you for judging. And hi, I'm Sam Scott. I'll be your Member of Government. Thank nice you for to judging. meet you. Hi, my name is Caleb Ernst. I'm going to be your uh, Member of Opposition. Hi, my name is Jesse Ernst. I'll be your Leader of Opposition. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for your time. And also, we have an extra copy of the resolution to give to you. Thank you very much. Yep. So before we start this round, is there anything you'd like to tell us about yourself uh, that might help us debate specifically to you or anything in particular you'd like to see in the round? Um, not especially. You may, do you want to help me out a little bit and maybe give me a hint? I mean, I mean is there, you mean like in regards to my personal life or something or just? So I, you said this was your first time yes. judging, right? Okay, yeah. Cool. So, okay. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward to explain everything. Yeah, in my personal life, I am a school teacher. Okay. I don't know if that helps you out at all. <laughs> okay. Ready? And if I could get your name one more time. Uh, Jason Whitman. Okay, thank yes. you. All right, let's begin. Terror. Bodies laying across the street. This is something that is a very real threat today and very real threat to Europe, the United States, and whole Western civilization. And this is a terrorist organization called ISIS, standing for the Islamic State. This is something that cannot be tolerated in today's world and simply cannot take any risks whatsoever to uh, risk any attack on any allies or countries part of the UN. That is why we stand resolved that the EU should help Italy increase its military capacity against ISIS. I also got a resolutional analysis here and that first is a, basically a fact. This is a fact resolution. It's saying we should help Italy increase its military capacity. It's not giving us, it doesn't use a word like reform saying it's policy. There's no policy action needs to be taken. It's all we, the government team needs to prove is that the, Italy is in danger from ISIS and that um, there is a threat and they should be helped. Let's move on to the first contention under this, and this is invasion from Libya. Now right now, ISIS, uh, Italy is completely scared and terrified of a possible invasion from Libya that ISIS has recently gone into. And as of a day ago, uh, ISIS has released a new video and it's threatening them, saying, quote, the nation signed with the blood on the, on the cross, and quote, we are, uh, we are south of Rome. This is the ISIS explicitly threatening Italy to come in, and one of the main objectives they want to do is kill the Pope in Italy, and then they want to assassinate him. So they're a very real threat to Italy that has persisted, and they've made, uh, and made direct threats toward Italy. Yes, this will be the first of three questions. Okay, now has ISIS ever told anywhere else that they're actually going to attack them, or is this the first instance? This is not the first instance, but in this scenario, they are bordering right next to Italy. They can literally just walk in Italy and start attacking them. They're just gaining the forces. Another thing to know under here is 200,000. 200,000. There are currently uh, estimated, uh, uh, this is also a low world estimate, that there are 200,000 ISIS conglomerates in the Middle East and 30,000 outside of the Middle East. So obviously there's a huge amount of ISIS close to Italy, ready to launch an attack, threatening and just collecting troops. Now Italy's uh, uh, military budget, that's the second point under here, has been cut by 40%, cut by 40%. Military's military, uh, Italy's, excuse me, military capacity has been cut by 40% and only have a standing 5,000 troops ready to fight ISIS. They are completely and utterly unprepared to fight Italy. Yes, second question. questions. Does Italy know that ISIS has threatened them? Uh, of course, yes, definitely have. Even the defense secretary themselves have been saying that they're actually incapable of properly defending themselves or calling on the UN, the United States, and other countries to try to help them. No action has been taken yet. The EU needs to help them immediately. Otherwise, they can be invaded by ISIS and, and uh, they can achieve their goals. Now, this will move on to the second contention, and that is a gateway to EU, gateway to Europe. Simply that if Italy is taken over by ISIS, this is essentially a gateway to Europe. It's going to be very easy for ISIS to front effective and strategic attacks against the Europe and Western civilization. Now, essentially how it happened, how it would happen is 
If we let ISIS simply just go around capturing a state here, a state there, eventually going to become even more powerful than to the Western. Uh, we, we basically cannot let ISIS keep fronting these attacks. We need to all group together and we can't just be fighting them as individual countries. Right now, the counterterrorism strategy is very ineffective. ISIS is only growing from this 200,000 troops. They're only growing. This is the last question I'll accept. Um, hasn't our counter to them been Egypt, America, uh, let's see, there were others who started bombing ISIS? Hasn't our counter been yeah. grouped together? I'd actually like to talk about that in my third contention as of airstrikes utterly ineffective. Airstrikes are failing. Now, there's several uh, uh, adjustment naval staff uh, professors and, uh, uh, and Air Force generals that are saying that airstrikes do not work without troops on the ground. And this is an empirical example, so we can see in the examples of the Obama sites of Syria and Iraq where airstrikes have worked, that is solely because boots have been on the ground. And even and, uh, these adjustment staff professors and, and Air Force generals have even said themselves that Airstrike, even with airstrikes, we still have to conduct high profile raid against terrorists, have boots on the grounds, be using the democratic support and helping the government in the uh, in political spectrum. There's so many other things that come into account for airstrike to work. In fact, our first airstrikes, sorry, I don't have time to take any other questions. Um, the, the first time we bombed ISIS was in Kobani, and there we bombed empty buildings. No ISIS terrorists were killed in the first time the United States launched a counterterrorism airstrikes against. Uh, ISIS. Ultimately, our counterterrorism strategies are failing, and that leaves Italy even more vulnerable. With their military capacity being cut by 40%, only 5,000 troops to defend, potentially 30,000 or more in their area, and with no current backing right now, Italy is destined to fail. If no support is given to them, they will fall. And it is because of this, we cannot risk it at all to not support the military capacity. So looking at the resolution, we should help Italy increase its military capacity against ISIS. And I'd just like to reiterate here that the government team doesn't need to give the, uh, directly give a policy institution on how we should do it. All the resolution is asking us is to prove that they are in danger and they do need help. And that is what I believe we have proved. Obviously, 40% cut their budget. Um, the military defense minister have said themselves they're not prepared for any mission right now. They uh, only have 5,000 troops against potentially 30,000 or more, and there's 200,000 ISIS conglomerates around the Middle East. Italy is scared out of its wits. It is preparing for an attack, and it's going to be ultimately ineffective. They can't prepare for it because they simply are not strong enough. Without this support, Italy will fall. ISIS is a very real threat to the Western civilization. They have threatened virtually all of Western civilization. They are right next to Italy. They are literally in Libya. They have burned Libyan airports and uh, hindered uh, civilian capacities there. They have beheaded uh, hundreds of people, killed thousands more. They are a terrible terrorist organization that is bent on destroying the Western civilization. And now they have the capabilities to do so, starting with Italy. Where will it stop? When they gain a good footing, a strategic point in Italy, they literally have a potential of taking over the rest of Europe. This is something that we cannot ignore. And that is why the Italy is threatened by ISIS. They have said so themselves. ISIS, uh, Italy, uh, ISIS is preparing a very, very real threat right next to Italy and are prepared to do so. Thank you. It's completely okay. up to you guys. Can you, you, are the okay? you, can you hear us okay? I With can. The I can. Okay. But I'll close it if you want. Well, I think uh, I'd rather stay alive and not die of heat stroke than okay. just talk like okay. this. So, this is, uh, I don't need it. Oh, okay. Italy isn't scared of ISIS, and that's a fact proved by the uh, government team's own case. You see, the reason is, Italy got threatened by ISIS and then cut down the amount of troops they had. What does that say Italy's stance on ISIS is? No threat. We can deal with this. And see, the reason is, because a terrorist attack, they don't come in bands of armies. That's not how terrorists have attacked the U.S. They attack in twos and threes with bombings and plane crashings. See, terrorists don't 
in some cases they have stormed places, such as Afghanistan and Iraq, which I'll be getting to later, other countries actually started bombing them. Even countries such as Egypt, who actually are supportive of Muslims, they still hate ISIS. And that's why ISIS is never going to get off its feet. So, moving into the speech of the Prime Minister, the resolutional analysis that this was a fact resolution will be, uh, we agree to that. Now, moving down specifically into the arguments given, talking about the contentions of the uh, government team. Their first contention was that uh, there is a threat from Lib Libya, from ISIS. I have one response to this. ISIS has threatened others. ISIS has threatened the U.S. ISIS has threatened Japan. ISIS has threatened Jordan. ISIS has threatened basically the world. And what, what has become of it? They got themselves bombed? Yes. Uh, doesn't ISIS uh, right now is in Libya, which borders Italy? Yeah, they're also in Afghanistan, which borders the rest of the, the Eastern Europe. So what's the difference? Why are we all of a sudden going, hey, Italy, ISIS is next door. Let's go help you. Uh, you guys over by Afghanistan are on your own. Why all of a sudden are we doing this? Just, I don't get that. But in response to sub point uh, B, or the second point under that, and where he talked about Italy and how they had just downsized their army, um, my one response to this is Italy knows its own threat. Italy knows its own threat. And, and see, the point here is Italy is just like the U.S. in the fact that they have their own leaders, they have their own people. You, you don't get to be the, I don't know if it's prime minister, president, pope, I'm not really sure who's completely in charge of Italy, but you don't get to that position by being a fool. Those people who are in charge are smart. They know the threat coming from ISIS. They know how to use their military. They just downsized it. Well, that means all those people are still there to resize it if it is ever needed. Italy knows its own threat. Italy doesn't need help. The world attacks ISIS. See, it's not like Italy's on its own here. We all know terrorism is bad. We all know the result of not stopping ISIS. The world isn't standing for ISIS, as I'll be getting to later. Moving down into their second contention of it's the gateway to the EU. I have, my first response is no, it's not. It is not the gateway to the EU. There are many other gateways, such as Greece, which has a weaker economy than Italy, and yet still borders uh, Western Asia. The entire eastern side of Europe is the gateway to the EU for ISIS. They can go anywhere they want through this. I mean, even the terrorist attacks that happened up in uh, uh, Denmark. There was a, a terror attack up in Denmark. There was a terror attack in France uh, across from the, at the uh, cartoon it because of the cartoons. It, this isn't a they have to go through a gateway scenario. They don't. They have proven that. That's, terrorists don't need a gate. They make their own bombs. Moving down into their third uh, contention, talking about the airstrikes we're failing. This is U.S. airstrikes we're talking about here. So my first response is Italy knows what it's doing, again, of course. But my second response is the EU, the European Union, which is a conglomeration of countries, much like the UN, only uh, it's only European countries, is not the US. The EU is not the US. Those are US attacks that failed. Now, moving down into four reasons or four contentions why the EU shouldn't give help to Italy here. My first reason is it leaves others open. Now, ISIS isn't isn't a fool either. Don't get me wrong. It's not like a bunch of people running around with guns. These people are smart. So what happens when you say, so, I mean, basic strategy is I say that I'm going to attack one place and then simply just attack another when the EU gives all its support to Italy. It leaves the back door open. That's why they should not do that because it leaves the back door open. Spread out the support. Make sure you can stand the whole line and it would be like uh, make, building a wall and leaving a gate, uh, leaving a gap in the middle, or a window in a wall. There's a way through. You solidify everything else except that hole, and that's where ISIS will attack. My second, res my second reason not to do it is because ISIS will consider it an attack on themselves. Well, uh, yes. Is ISIS rational? They are rational in what they, in their actions, about irrational beliefs. They believe everyone should die. Everyone not of their religion should die. That is irrational. But the actions they take, such as hiding from the U.S. when they're trying to kill them, and not just walking around with open arms, 
that is rational. They're smart in an irrational, uh, behind an irrational belief. Which leads me to my third contention is ISIS will target the EU, the entire European Union. Once it shows it is against ISIS, ISIS of course will retaliate and strike against the entire EU instead of concentrating their possible attack in one place, even though they've threatened like 90% of the world. And yet, what have we seen? They're stuck in Libya and Iraq and Afghanistan. But then my fourth and final uh, reason why they shouldn't is because it's already being dealt with. ISIS is being dealt with. Now, we've had the U.S. airstrikes, as we already talked about, which did have some success. They blew up uh, uh, oil rigs and ISIS's uh, support lines. But then you also have Iran actually attacked ISIS in Iraq. Now, this is Iran, our enemy, Iran, is going with us on this point. And then you also have Egypt attacking uh, ISIS in Libya, the exact place where the government team is saying we're going to get an attack from is already being attacked by a Muslim nation. There's no threat from Libya, and it is for that reason that I would strongly encourage an opposition battle. Thank you. ISIS is the largest threat in our world today, and to try to claim to do so is just irrational and really will only end up in even more people being killed. I'm just going to go out and respond to all the points the uh, opposition team brought up and really show that, first of all, that ISIS is a major threat, and they are going to attack Italy, and we need to be prepared. Starting off with their responses to Contention 1, they kind of have one overall response of ISIS has threatened others. ISIS has threatened others. I have two responses to this. My first response is first opportunity. First opportunity. They threaten the, Uni the United States while they're living in the Middle East. Now they are literally bordering Italy. They are very, very close to Italy, and they have said they have said direct message to Italy: Italy, we are south of Rome. We are going to attack. That is the most direct threat they can have. They have made threats. Yes, we hate the United States. We hate all all people who oppose us. But they have not. They have, this is the first time they've actually been on the border, ready to attack and ready to kill Italy. So they they declare direct attacks, and they're actually capable of carrying them out. My second response, yes, first of three questions. Now, ISIS didn't say, we're going to attack you, Afghanistan, and then attack it. They just did it, right? Yes. Okay. So now, my second response is, Italy is a gateway. Italy is a gateway. My heart talked about this. Italy is a gateway into the EU. Now, they talked about other gateways. I'm going to get to those later. But the reason that they would want to attack Italy is because it's a clear gateway. And also, it's a symbol. And that's my third response, is a symbolic gateway. The symbolic gateway. And they talked about how they're fighting for their religion. I would agree, obviously. They're fighting for their distorted view of Islam, of what, of what they believe. However, Italy is a symbolic gateway. What they want to do is they want to kill the Pope. That's their first step, is they kill the leader of, of all, all who oppose them. Then they kill everyone else. It's a symbolic gateway, and that's where they would like to start conquering Europe. That's exactly why they want to start with Italy, because of the symbolic nature of it. Okay, first of, uh, or second of three questions. Now, being a terrorist organization, they probably wouldn't invade Italy. They would probably use a terrorist strike, like driving an airplane into the Vatican to kill the Pope, I, not just actually invade the country. Actually, right? ISIS has used very military-like um, they, they've used very military-like uh, methods in the Middle East of just attacking cities, attacking cities, engulfing whole cities. That's how they work. Some that's how they work a lot of times. Now, they've declared that they have an army. They have a standing army in Libya ready to invade. They're actually planning on making a full-out invasion. That's their plan. And we've seen this through what they've been doing and what they've declared they're going to do. Moving on to their, they had a couple specific responses, cut by 40%. They said Italy knows what the threat is. My response to this is uh, two years. Two years. Now, they, now this, this budget was cut two years ago. Italy's going through some economic hard times. They had to cut their defense budget. Then, just one day ago, yesterday, it was Tuesday, ISIS declared that they're going to, they, they're building on Italy, uh, they're building in Libya, and they're going to attack Italy. Italy cannot just snap its fingers and all of a sudden they have a strong army with strong technology ready to fight Libya. No, they need the UN support to be able to build that up, and we should be able to give that support, and we can give that support under a government balance. Now, then, um, and then also my, my second response is can't defend, can, or we or can't defend. My partner talked about this, the defense minister himself said, we cannot defend against ISIS, and we need help. We're giving them that help, and you can give them that help under a government balance. 
Moving down to their uh, gateway of the earth, they said it's not a gateway. My response is declare will enter through, kind of the response I made earlier, is declare will enter through Italy. They declare they will enter through Italy. They have plans directly to enter through Italy. That's what their plan is. They, they declare that they're going to do that. Greece and uh, Greece does not pose the symbolic nature of making it into, in, into the EU, and that's why they want to fight it off. Uh, or that's why they want to attack through Italy. Also, he talked about a bunch of other attacks. There was one in Denmark, there was one in France. My response is, other attacks, not ISIS. Other attacks, not ISIS. They were from, they were from Islamic extremist terrorists, but they were not ISIS attacks. They were not organized by the Islamic State. They were from other organizations. So these are completely irrelevant. Uh, they said that Italy knows what, or Italy knows what it's doing. My response is simply just, nope. According, uh, just to clarify my other responses I made about how they cut, uh, cut their budget, they don't have enough money, and they, uh, yes, last question. So you're saying that Italy has no idea how to defend itself? I'm saying they do have an idea how to defend themselves, they just don't have enough money to do it, and they don't have enough troops, because they had to cut their budget. We can give them that, that force under a government ballot. They, they have this too, the defense minister himself said, we cannot defend ourselves, we just simply don't have enough. We want to defend ourselves, but we just simply can't. And they're taking all the measures they can, but it's simply not enough. Um, and then he said that EU, not US, my, about the airstrikes failing. My response to this is all airstrikes failed. All airstrikes failed. While airstrikes look good and everything, they give the public something to rally behind, they're not actually, they're not successful wherever they come from. From Jordan, from Israel, from the US, from Egypt, they do, they're not effective and they're not what we need in this situation. They don't work. We need boots on the ground, which Italy can be, which Italy can use with this, with EU assistance, which we can give. Moving on to their contentions, though, they said leaving the back door open. My first response: no back door, no back door. There's no really no back door. They said that they can come in from Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the middle of the Middle East. This is in far east Middle East. It's far away from Europe, so that's really irrelevant. The only place they can enter through is Turkey, which is actually fighting them heavily on the ground. They are invading Turkey, which is ironically in military-like in military-like tactics. Turkey is fighting them off, much like a conventional war. That's how they haven't been able to enter Europe through Turkey. Um, and so there really isn't another back door besides Italy, which brings my second point is symbolic nature. Symbolic nature. They want to enter through Italy because they get to kill the Pope first, and then they take over all the rest of the Christian world. Obviously, that serves their symbolic nature for their beliefs. Um, the, bring, uh, now to contention two. They said ISIS will be, or will continue, or ISIS is basically concentrating its attacks. It's, it's not, or it's, it's going to concentrate its attacks. Response is already attacking, already attacking. Um, ISIS is already attacking, it's already making attacks, just hasn't attacked Italy yet. And then contention three, ISIS, not, or ISIS is being dealt with. They said basically that ISIS is not a threat. Two main responses. My first response is 10,000 people dead. 10,000 people dead. 10,000 people have died since 2014. If they're being dealt with, those people will still be alive. Just a couple weeks ago, they murdered 21 Christians on the shores of Egypt. They are growing, they're growing in Libya, and just today they declared that they're planning on attack, or yesterday they declared they're planning on attacking Italy. They are definitely a major threat in our world. Also, they talk about all these other Islamic um, organizations. They said that Iran's dealing with them, so therefore Islam, the Islamic is dealing with them. My response is, is not Islam. Not Islam. Just like make this very clear, ISIS is not an Islam, it is not really what, it is not, does not stand for what Islam stands for. And so to claim that they are completely purely Islam and that, that, that works, that's not it at all. They are a very distorted view of Islam, not what, not what it actually stands for. So in the end of the day, ISIS is our largest threat. They have threatened to attack Italy, and the only way to save them is to vote for the government, as a government ballot. Is to vote to have the EU send this help, to give the help to Italy so that they can defend against ISIS. Thank you. Judge, you know why in the end of the day I believe you should be voting for the affirmative team? Because uh, is, is because Italy is not afraid of ISIS. They released a statement on Vice.com in response to the ISIS threat. They said, let the dogs bark, we're not afraid. That is a statement from Italy in response to the ISIS threat. They are not afraid, they know their own military capabilities, and they know the threat that ISIS poses. And because of this statement that they are not afraid of ISIS, I believe you should be voting for us in the end of the day. But now let's get into the arguments that were presented in the last speech. His response across from contention one was, first opportunity leaves a gateway and symbolic gateway. I have four responses to this. My first response is not a threat in Afghanistan, but they still took it over. 
not a threat in Afghanistan, but they still took it over. The whole point here is they're saying, oh, they threatened, so now they're going and going to go in and take it over. But the fact is ISIS doesn't operate that way. What they will do is go in and silently take over a country and take over Afghanistan, as is proven in Afghanistan. My second response is threaten Jordan, but no attack. Again, with the example that uh, the big piece of evidence in the news was ISIS burned a Jordan air pilot alive with basically with a flamethrower. But the fact is, after that point, they went on to threaten Jordan and said, we will come take over your country. But the fact is, they haven't. That was over a month ago that they threatened Jordan, and they still have not attacked. So just the fact that they have threatened Italy doesn't mean they're going to attack them. So now my third response is they don't threaten before an attack. The only times it, uh, ISIS has actually threatened a country, they haven't attacked. But the, when, the, when they do actually attack a country, they go silently and do not threaten the actual country. Yes. Did your partner say that ISIS has basically threatened everyone? Yes. Okay. They, they have basically threatened everyone, but they have not specifically, they have pretty much said it's ISIS against the world, but they haven't said, hey, Afghanistan, we're going to come take you over. The fact is they have not specifically said to a country that they're going to come take them over and then carried out those actions. It is simply them going silently and then taking over the country. So my fourth response is ISIS is being attacked in Libya. Again, they're saying Italy is this big problem because ISIS has threatened them from Libya. But as my partner read evidence to, Egypt has currently conducted airstrikes and military of force against ISIS in Libya because in retaliation for killing the 20 uh, Egyptian people. Egypt is directly countering the threat from ISIS in Libya. So Libya, there is no actual uh, chance that ISIS could attack Italy from Libya. Now their next point about two was about uh, their military capabilities. It was two years and can't defend. I have two responses to this. My first response is 5,000 versus 2,000. In their first speech, they said that the Italy military has 5,000 people manpower. And then they went on to say that ISIS has 2,000 people in the Middle East. Now in the current future, if ISIS is going to attack Italy, they're going to only have those 2,000 people in the Middle East. They said that they have people in other places, but the fact is where they have and the people they will attack with is 2,000. So Italy has the people to fight back. They have 5,000 and ISIS has 2,000. So my second response is Italy is not afraid. Again, as I read my opening quote, let the dogs bark. We're not afraid. That is a quote from Italy saying that they are not afraid of ISIS. Yes. Now, uh, who said this? Was this a political figure or was it like a military general? It was a statement from the government. Okay. So it's government saying we're not afraid. We have a military force. Now, let's, deal with, let's go down and deal with their contention, too. He said, really, that uh, ISIS said they'll enter through Italy and that there's other attacks uh, by non-ISIS country, non-ISIS terrorist groups. I have three responses. My first response is Italy is not afraid. Again, I'm just reiterating the point that I said in the beginning of my speech. Italy is not afraid, and they do not think that ISIS can actually take over Italy. My second response is other countries are other gateways. The point here my partner made is that ISIS can go through other countries and get into the EU through other countries not just Italy. Now my third response is Italy not threatened. Again, they said let the dogs bark. We're not afraid. That's the point. Italy knows the threat that's happening to them. They know their military capabilities and they have released a statement. The government released a statement saying that we're not afraid. There's no reason for us to increase uh, Italy's military capacity. Now going down to contention three, they pretty much responded to U.S. airstrikes were not effective. I have two responses to this. My first response is the first example was not effective. From there on out, they were. The first example was not effective, but from there on out, they were. They simply, the first terrorist attack bombed a, uh, a building with nobody in it. But the fact is, after that point, it has decreased ISIS's capabilities to attack people by 30%. Their airstrikes have been effective. Now, going down to their response that Italy knows the threat, he pretty much said, nope. The fact is, Italy isn't afraid. I can say it again, but I think I beat that dead horse enough. Now, let's move on to our contentions. He said that... Uh, Pretty much that there's no back door in the uh, symbolic nature. My one response is Turkey airstrikes. They said they have threatened Turkey, and Turkey is using military force and manpower to go in and fight ISIS. But the fact is, Turkey is using airstrikes to stop ISIS. They're using airstrikes just like the U.S. that is being effective, which is yet another reason why we, there is no reason to increase uh, Italy's military capacity. 
Now our contention to uh, pretty much about, uh, about ISIS will target the entire EU. They said they're already attacking. My one response to this is they'll threaten Italy and attack other places. Threaten Italy and attack other places. If you think about the war, uh, really the ideology behind ISIS, what they're going to do is say, Italy, we're going to come attack you and kill the Pope so that the entire EU focuses in on Italy and is like, oh, we got to beef up their military, increase their military capacity. And then while the EU is focused on Italy, they're going to go to other countries and take over those other countries while they are not prepared. So that's the, really the military tactics. So now going down to contention four, he said 10,000 people are dead. I simply have one response, and that is of everyone just started to attack them back. Everyone just started to attack them back. As my partner responded, the U.S. Air had just conducted airstrikes back in November. They started these airstrikes. Iran has attacked ISIS and Iraq within the last month. And Egypt, due to the 20 Egyptian people that were killed by ISIS, they are now conducting airstrikes and military force in Libya. We just started to attack, so sure, 10,000 people have been killed in 2014. But the fact is, I urge you to vote for the opposition team. Thank you. you get to hear from the opposition team. <laughs> All right. Wait, I'm sorry. Stop. I'm sorry. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> I'm sure they didn't mind if I take an extra two. <laughs> okay. Ready now. Okay. In this final opposition speech of the round, I'm going to be boiling it down to five different arguments that definitively show that an opposition ballot is warranted. Now, the first argument you've heard only a, only a few times, uh, Italy doesn't need help. You may have heard that. That's the first of the most important argument in this round. They don't need help. They said they don't need help. They've shown they don't need help. And I think this argument is now saying, that's my name, don't wear it out, please. So, we're going to move on. Italy doesn't need help. Moving down onto my second voting issue, or a reason to vote for the opposition team. ISIS has never attacked with a warning. ISIS has never attacked with a warning. This is of huge significance because it completely destroys any need for Italy to beef up because all past president shows that ISIS, when they invaded Afghanistan, when they invaded Iraq, there was no warning. When they invaded Turkey, there was no warning. When they threatened Jordan, no attack. When they threaten Italy, guess what the result's going to be? No attack. There's a reason for that. They know what happens when you threaten someone. When you threaten someone, they immediately put up their defenses and leave open a different spot. They put up a bold front in one place, simply leave open another place. ISIS isn't foolish. Which brings me to the third voting issue, which is of it leaves others open. It leaves others open. Now, the EU is the conglomeration of European countries coming together. So when all, so when European, it's not all of the European countries, but it's some of the European countries. When they send their resources down into Italy, those same resources are not in other places protecting from ISIS. I can, I think rounds are starting to, are starting to end. It leaves the, so as I was saying, it leaves the door open for other countries. Those same resources are not defending the other countries. That's basic, but fairly good military strategy. And it points back to the fact of what ISIS has done. They don't threaten when they attack. Moving down into my fourth voting issue, which is if ISIS will target the European Union. The EU knows this, because ISIS, you know, as we've said, they've pretty much said, we hate the world, and if you attack us, we're going to attack you back. You know, you know, the U.S. comes in with an airstrike, and ISIS says, and we're mad at you now. Egypt comes in with an airstrike, and ISIS executes 20 people. So all this is going to do, if the EU shows we are against ISIS, is going to inflame ISIS's passion against the EU. Just another reason not that uh, the EU shouldn't do this. Moving down into my fifth and final and, mo and probably the third most important voting issue. Nobody likes ISIS. Nobody likes 
ISIS, and that's a fact. And the reason that that fact is important is because the world is going to take a stand against ISIS. ISIS is known as a radical Muslim. The Muslims have said, that's not us. We're attacking now because you're starting to kill your own people. Nobody likes ISIS. The world is going to take a stand against ISIS. We've already started to take a stand against ISIS, and we're going, and it's basically not going to last much longer. So when you look back to the resolution, to the facts, should the EU do this? I think you can see the answer is clearly no. Thank you. The thing I want you to take away from this round, is it really worth the risk to possibly let ISIS take over a whole state and end up taking over Europe? Where would it end? Italy, Britain, the UK, all of Europe, the United States. We cannot risk letting them take over a strategic advantage where they can execute thousands more. We're going to be looking at this through three main voting issues. The first one is preempt. And through these voting issues, I'll be responding to most of the uh, more important arguments that they uh, brought up. So that is basically the first voting issue, preempt. We cannot be reactionary. We cannot wait for Italy to be overwhelmed to intervene. By then, it will be too late. ISIS is on the border. They are in Libya. And I would like to clarify real quickly, um, I believe Caleb said that it was 5,000 5, troops versus 2,000 troops. I said that's 2,000. You misheard me here. I said ISIS has 200,000 troops in the Middle East. That is what I said in the very first speech, and they have 30,000 outside of the Middle East. Those were the numbers. They have 200,000 in the Middle East. They are a force to be reckoned with. Maybe two years ago, they were a small terrorist group that was starting to pop up, but now they are a force to be reckoned with, taking over countries, a risk we cannot accept. Let's also look at another thing uh, in, the, in the second voting issue of Italy vulnerable. Italy vulnerable. So they talked about in the last few speeches about how if we focus all of our resources on Italy, that's just going to open up all the other countries that have to come through. Now, uh, my partner covered this, and we're going to talk about those his responses as well. But another response you can put on the flow is, is Italy's the only one. Essentially, Italy's the only one who is vulnerable. The other countries did not cut their military budget by 40% two years ago. The other ones have more than 5,000 troops to defend their whole country with. Italy has also sacrificed at least 90 F-35 uh, fighter jets because of their cut in the budget. They are simply not militarily prepared to defend ISIS. They have said so themselves. Let's talk about this for a second. Now, I know Caleb talked about how the government released a statement saying, uh, let the dogs come at us, basically. Let them come. We're ready. Our first response is propaganda. Propaganda. This is basically so the people don't unrest and riot and get terrified. That's what the government's supposed to do. Keep the people and uh, make sure that they feel safe. My second response is defense minister. The defense minister himself, the one who's make, whose job is to make sure Italy will be safe from ISIS, said himself, we are not militarily capable to defend from ISIS. They are asking for help. He said himself, UN needs to come help us. The defense ministry her himself, I talked about himself, it's not her, said himself, and I talked about this in the very first speech, they want help. They want the UN to help. They want America's help. They cut their budget by 40%. They got rid of over half of their military two years ago. They do not have time themselves to build their military back up. Let's move on now to voting issue three, and that is of the resolution. We're really looking at what the resolution is saying. Let's just look at the resolution again. It's what we're actually supposed to be debating here, and that is the EU should help Italy increase its military capacity against ISIS. Now, the um, opposition team agreed that this is a fact resolution, yes, and they agreed with our analysis and said, but then they said that we didn't support it. But what our analysis was saying is that all we have to prove is that Italy is in danger and they should be helped. And I believe we have proved they are in danger. ISIS is knocking on their door. They are ready to come and invade Italy. They need our help. They are the ones that are the most vulnerable in the southern Europe. When without our help, they will crumble. Looking back to the symbolic arguments, um, this went back and forth a lot. Of He said that there's no threat was in Afghan and they still invaded. Basically, the argument was, no, when, if they don't make a threat, they invade. And if they do make a threat, they will invade. The thing is, though, ISIS is irrationally symbolic. 
They do everything to symbolize the religion and that they are serious. When they want to kill a religious figure like the Pope and they have the capabilities, that is something that, well, one thing with Italy, Italy is so weak that they can just tell them, we're going to attack you here, and they could probably still overwhelm Italy because it is so incapable of stopping an ISIS attack. That's the thing with Afghan, they were stronger and maybe that's why they didn't want to. But with like, they're so symbolic and they are all symbolic in their killings and what they do that killing a pope is obviously something that ISIS definitely would want to do. They want to symbolize to the world that Christianity and Catholicism or whatever, any forms of it, does not stand as the false religion. That is what ISIS thinks, that's what they believe. They want to broadcast that to the world in the most gruesome ways possible. This is ultimately something that we cannot risk. Italy is ill-prepared. They are not capable of defending from attack from Libya. ISIS has more than enough forces to, to attack Libya, kill a pope, and possibly take over it. It's simply a risk we cannot take, and we have an obligation to help them. Thank you, and it's been a pleasure speaking for you.